here it is. My finished but unfinished Moravian workbench. I still want to put a, um, a coat of African style Danish oil on it. But. So there's the tray. It's good and secure. Doesn't come up at all. Um, I used the, the method of putting two runners on the bottom that hook under here and brace against the, this leg here. So that's what holds it in place. Um, so <clears throat> as I was sanding it today with a bunch of the little monkeys that live around here, um, I just saw how incredibly flawed this wood is. It's really pretty. When I, it's all still got all the sand dust on it. So sand dust, sawdust from the sandpaper on it. Um, but when I put a finish on it, I think it'll clear up. It, it's, it's really pretty. There are some flaws here that I filled with epoxy. This one right here went all the way through to the bottom and left a, left a drip coming out the bottom. Um, and I tried to keep it clear, but little kids, they scratched it up. Um, but that's okay, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have stayed clear for long anyways. Um, the tray here is pretty close. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the gap. You can see here there's a gap, but it's not, it's never wider than an eighth of an inch. I don't think. Here it's down to probably a 30 second, so that's that's pretty good. If I could do it all over again, I really wonder how much better I can do it. The main thing being this Jala wood is just hard to work with. When I watch Will Myers pull out his mortising chisel and take out half of a half of a through tenon with two or three hits, you know that I would pound on these these legs for hours to make a single tenon and it is with sharp chisels it was not dull chisels it's just really okay maybe not hours probably hours it took a really long time to do every single one um, and as far as planing man it was just a bear you can see on this one here um, along the length of this one piece one significant split two significant splits uh, down here uh, three and four these are going in the opposite direction um, Right here is a huge knot which was so hard that you just I would plane this a hundred times For a hundred passes with the plane for every one pass on this surface here that didn't have the knot in it no exaggeration it just was so hard and um, Yeah I went with a simple vise attachment. I just bolted it on. I made the vise jaws the same width as the top. I don't know what advantage that'll be in the future. I could always change it if I need to. Um, it's not quite, the jaws aren't quite level with the top, but we'll, we'll see how much of a problem that poses. Thanks. Um, I liked doing this, um, these tusk tenons. Um, there was the last thing I did, the last joinery I did, and so it was it was a little easier. I did just a little something on the end there for no re reason in particular. Um, yeah, and it's just rough. Here, huge splits through here that uh, I glued, I kind of glued to repair, and uh, yeah, it's just the, the these long stretchers don't follow the dimensions given in the uh, Will Myers video because I didn't have lumber that dimension. So his has just um, two shoulders and mine has four. So um, the, you can see that the this side is smaller in every dimension than, than this side of the stretcher. Um, but it worked well. It tightens up good, tightens up well and, um, and it holds sturdy. Tyru, venez voir si tu peux me aider en lever ça. So we'll try to take this off and show you what I did underneath. Tu peux un peu laisser en haut là. Bah oui. Laissez en haut. Voilà. Vas-y. Et voilà. It's a little too heavy to do by myself. I don't. I think it probably doesn't weigh more than a hundred pounds. Anyways, it's hard for, I could move it by myself, but not accurately. 
Um, I can't buy dowels here, but I had some hot water copper pipe that was roughly the size of my largest drill bit. So that's what I used instead. And then I did the same elongated hole like he did. After all my effort, I didn't try to flatten the bottom because I was losing so much thickness. I wanted to keep the weight at the top. Here you can see that drip of epoxy that came through all the way from the other side. Um, but it fits really well and it holds this in place. Here, come, come around, you can see how this is fit in here. So you can see that it's just uh, just those one, the, it, the back of it pushes against here to keep it sliding away from it and this little tongue up here um, keeps it from lifting up on this side and that holds it in place real well. Also left to right, it's just perfectly snug. I was really happy with that. Um, the legs come apart okay. I, I wouldn't say it's as, uh, as easy as they show in the video, but that probably has a lot to do with my lack of skill and the fact that this is not yellow pine. Um, I'd love to try it again. I don't think I would try it again with the same wood. I don't have access to well-dimensioned lumber, so learning how to use my chainsaw and my smallest, cheapest Alaskan mill on the market <laughs> um, so that I can make lumber and then maybe I could build another one of these in four years when the wood is dry enough. But uh, we'll see.